Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence intro of the USB Rubber Ducky. So this is a device that's brought to us by the guys over at Hack5. They're the same guys who bring us the Wi-Fi Pineapple. And basically this is a device that's meant to look like a USB thumb drive and it can act like a USB thumb drive, but it also has a hidden keyboard in there that lets us run keystrokes on whatever we plug it into. So let's jump right in with a live demo here. I've got a fresh new Windows 7 virtual machine and I've slowed the attack down so that we can kind of step through it as it happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug my USB rubber ducky into the USB port here, and I'm not going to touch the keyboard or the mouse. This is all the ducky now. Um, basically, it's going to launch Internet Explorer, pull up this hard-coded URL. It's going to save that image to the hard drive and then close Internet Explorer. It's going to open up Paint and then open that image up off the hard drive and then set it as a desktop background and close Paint. So just that fast, we have been hot-dogged. So in addition to being kind of a cool attack vector, uh, can also be a tool that you can use to hot dog your coworkers who leave their workstations unlocked. So here is the hot dog wallpaper payload that we just saw execute. And you don't really have to be a programmer to understand it. It's pretty straightforward. These are all just things that you can do from the keyboard. So if you sit in front of a Windows machine and run through this sequence of commands, you will hot dog yourself. So the USB rubber ducky has been around since 2010, but has recently made an appearance on the USA Network's hit TV show, Mr. Robot. Basically, Angela can't remember the commands to type into the femto cell to deploy it to man in the middle all of the FBI agent's cell phones. So as a backup, Mobley gives her a rubber ducky, which she tells her has Mimicats on it. And all she needs to do is if she sees a computer that's unattended and unlocked, she can just shove that right in the side, wait 15 seconds, pull it back out, and Mimicats will pull all the cached passwords and domain info and store them back on the device. So this is kind of funny considering that she is having problems remembering what commands to type in, and the USB rubber ducky is literally a device that types in commands, uh, but instead of putting those commands on there, he gives her Mimicats. So just a little bit of nerd humor there. Um, if you want to purchase a USB rubber ducky, you can do that in the Hack5 shop. Uh, looks like they're sold out right now, but they're $45. Um, and so how does the attack work, right? What's the difference between this and like our standard USB thumb drive that we can get from Amazon? So the USB rubber ducky has a 32-bit Atmel CPU and a micro SD card in it. So basically we take our script that we looked at earlier, like the hot dog payload, we have to encode it. But then we put that onto the micro SD card. And when you plug it into a computer, the rubber ducky actually tells the computer that it is a USB keyboard, not a thumb drive. Then the Atmel CPU here starts reading all of the keystrokes that you've programmed onto that file on the micro SD and spitting them out the USB bus as if it was a normal USB keyboard. So additionally, you can actually format your micro SD card into two separate partitions and use one partition as a storage device, just like a thumb drive, um, and then use the other partition to store your keystroke payload. So by doing this, you're able to have the thumb drive plug in and work like a thumb drive, but also still have that hidden keyboard in there. Okay, so a couple things to point out about the USB rubber ducky. Um, since it masquerades as a USB keyboard, it'll work on anything that you can plug a USB keyboard into. So it'll work on all the operating systems just the same. I mean, it'll even work on your Xbox, right? If you can plug a USB keyboard into your Xbox, you can plug the USB rubber ducky into there. Uh, so down at the bottom of the site here, we see this link to the payload wiki. This is a GitHub that has all the payloads on it. Um, so these are all pre-built for you to do. Here's the Mimicats payload, for example, uh, that they're talking about in Mr. Robot. So you can see it's just that big. Uh, so I'll probably do a follow-up video looking at that. Um, but you can see here, most of these are for Windows, but here's some for Ubuntu. Here's OS X. Here's Windows 10. Um, so they have payloads for all kinds of devices. So going back to the site here, uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you guys is the Duck Toolkit. So you can download the encoder and decoder um, and do it locally. I believe it's Java based. Um, but you can actually generate payloads right on the fly, uh, just right from this website. So you can have it do all kinds of recon, give me the computer information. Let's do a network scan, let's do a port scan, let's pull the SAM database. You can actually have it run exploits. So open a port, enable RDP, um, let's remove a Windows update, and then you can figure out what you want to do with your recon, right? Let's upload it via FTP. And so you just fill out these forms here, right? What kind of network scan do I want to do? What port do I want to open? 
um, all this stuff and you can literally generate these scripts right on the website. So how do we protect against something like the USB rubber ducky? Well, really, you just can't, right? The, the option here, if you really want to prevent this attack, is to disallow USB keyboards, and that's just not really an option for anyone. Um, but what's nice is that the USB rubber ducky does rely on being able to sit there and type those commands in, and it relies on the person who's executing the script to have the privileges to do the things that you're trying to do. So this type of attack works really well against people's personal machines where they typically log in as an administrator with elevated privileges, but not so well in like corporate environments where people typically have restricted privileges and there's mitigating controls uh, in place. So uh, coming up, I'll do a couple more videos where we actually implement some of these attacks and look through that. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.